Yani siz siz bana okeyleyin. Tamamdır. Biz hazırız. Katılımcılar gelmeye devam ediyorlar zaten. Ee, hiçbir problem yoktur. Biz de sunum süresince kameramız kapalı vaziyette sizi izliyor olacağız. Tamam. Şu anda başlayayım mı? Başlayabilirsiniz. Evet. Zaten e, kısa bir girizgah yapmak gerekirse e, Blink Mice'la çok kısa bir süre önce de Isaac'la beraberdik. Kongremizde sizi ağırlamıştık ve buradaki çok kişi artık sanırım e, hem sizi kişisel olarak hem de Blink Mice'ı tanımaya başladı. O yüzden de e, kendinizi evinizde hissedebilirsiniz. E, biz merakla bu günkü sunumu bekliyor olacağız. E, tekrar hoş geldiniz diyorum e, ve sözü size bırakıyorum. Çok teşekkür ederim. Çok sağ olun. Okay, so um, hello everyone. Uh, good night. Uh, so it's uh, 7.30 uh, in New Jersey right now. So I'm very glad to be with you all. Uh, so we're going to talk about, um, well, we're going to rethink about sustainability uh, with purpose. Um, so let's let's get started. Okay, so um, so I would like to touch base uh, quickly on where we are today. Um, as as we all know that climate change is a threat, um, and I'm sure that you heard about uh, a lot of uh, sustainable development goals, you know, like uh, throughout different uh, presentations today. Um, the climate change is a threat, um, and so is lack of well-being, especially after COVID virus, and it's been a lot of more, uh, you know, like a um, famous topic, you know, that everybody talks about. Um, Quality education uh, is another area where COVID has been affected very much. Um, in the uni United States, um, there was there were three million uh, kids and children that did not have um, internet and education access, you know, like this summer. So that's a lot. It's really affecting all the SDGs that you know, like uh, we talked about, or we really want to develop, you know, for the next, you know, like many years, you know, like up to 2030. Um, and also gender equality. Gender equality is one of the ones that has been going on as a discussion for, for many years. So where we are today, um, the reason I picked these four, just to give you an example of, you know, um, the idea of that we all have a goal to reach out to make the world better. So we are really focusing on the future, and I want us to focus on the present today. Um, and, you know, we really need to understand and be aware of our present. So the reason I... I I give this, you know, like um, four examples of, you know, like SDGs is that we, what is one common concept that connects all SDGs? You know, I mean, if we can think of one concept, it's being human, right? Or just a human. So we all know that everybody has a role to play in um, achieving, you know, like these goals for a thriving and sustainable world. But how? You know, we need to be aware of it. So, when we look at the current awareness of SDGs, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, what's the definition of sustainability, but the really awareness, you know, based on the research uh, for January 2020 that I found, uh, it's really less than 50%. So the awareness and the understanding the concept or just the thinking, what is in it for me? What can I do as an individual? It's really missing. Uh, but if we look at the correspondence, you know, like the respondents of 98%, they know what the sustainability is. It's just we need to apply it. And that's all, that's that's about everything. You know, we're going to talk a little bit more about how um, how sustainability could make more sense with purpose. And, um, and if we look at the, um, you know, SDGs, you know, like thinking about that, there is a big gap of, you know, like the concept of awareness. So we all have today and the future uh, generation like yourself have a challenge and opportunity. And uh, when we think about sustainability, um, it's really about, you know, like, sustaining you know like and being able to maintain something that you know you can use it for the future so if we think about um you know just the individual importance just you know like let's pick up you know like on the total you know we don't have to go through you know like each part of the graph but the reason i wanted just to show here so the individual importance is really high for climate change right you know because you know we all know about the global warming so I believe that if we don't uh, have a mindset to grow and succeed through our purpose, which I'm going to get into a little bit more and make a connection with sustainability, we cannot really achieve goals for a sustainable future. I don't think we could even be sustainable with our own life. Um, so. 
So when we think about the climate change and global change, um, you know, I really like this, you know, evaluation of sustainability mindset. So when we think about, um, when we think about right here, right? So we all focus on here and we are focusing on sustainability. So what are, you know, we're not adding any harm. But humans have a very powerful role to play. Um, and we need to just to remember it and to build the capabilities around the world. And based on the which culture we are coming from, based on the which countries we are coming from. So for example, in the US, you know, you get um you get, you know, fee, you know, you have to pay money if you don't recycle. But that's that might not be applying for other companies or countries. So there are a lot of will, you know, I'm sure that you heard about maybe all of them here and some companies that are working on, you know, sustainability, you know, based on these, you know, like a goals that they have to be participate. But there's a lot of will to move. But the way that we do things today are not affecting the change. And that's my personal opinion. It is not the speed thing um, about how quickly, you know, we change or are we changing in a meaningful way? I actually worry that um, I actually worry that if we if we solve the climate change, I worry about it. You know, it's it's very uh, everybody talks about it, but uh, I actually worry unless you know, like we have to figure out um, how to be in a relationship with all other systems that are equally important as the climate. But let's say that we solve it. Let's say we solve the climate change, you know, like tomorrow. Let's say that, you know, like we, we have mechanical, you know, like a, a device, you know, cold fusion that, you know, like that, that suddenly appears and we apply to everywhere. But if we don't change our fundamental bearing, which is, you know, like how sustain, how we sustain, um, it's not going to do any any good to us. We need to really sustain, you know, like other ecosystem, right? Like, like a water and earth and most importantly, each other. So that's something that really comes into your personality, your character, your purpose at the workplaces that you work and which is gonna really connect with your purpose and how you can do this sustainable, you know, like a future or even today present very naturally. So what is the role of the human? You know, like what I told you on the first slide, you know, all connects to be human. So if we are just really being a human, I don't think we will have a problem. We will just be able to support each other. So this is where it connects. You know, are we really connecting to each other? So what is the role of the humans? Um, are we preserving to uh, an environment? Are we, you know, like being away, you know, from the environment? Are we simply don't care? Or are we putting this, you know, like world in our, in our head um, in a very precious, you know, like box because we're going to destroy it? In the future, or are we engaging with the you know co-evolutionary you know like participants, and that comes with the mindset. Um, it's we have to adapt to ecosystem, you know, complex life um, and living system, and we have to understand um, how you know like life works. And maybe you remember from my other um, other presentation, but what I really believe that life works, you know, between the like uh, life view and then the work view. Um, and how can we an Asian, you know, how can we an instruments to, you know, um, to evolution, you know, regeneration instead of degeneration. Um, so I really believe sustainability isn't enough. We need to regenerate. And how we regenerate, it really comes, you know, like how we look at our purpose um, and our life to be sustainable. So, yes, my view of sustainability. And the reason I separ separated, you know, sustainability, because, you know, if you are going to bear and to keep up, you know, uh, yourself, just like yourself, if you just need to be alive, you need to drink water, right? You need to eat food, like a muscle theory, the basics. So just in really keeping a bearing and being sustainable, you need to drink your water. So what happened with COVID uh, in the U.S. at least, we weren't able to find water and food. So it is really affecting the nature is just really just kind of talking to humanity and saying that we need to work together. I mean, that's it, exactly what it is in my mind. And that's why I think humans uh, from all over the world, they're not meant to be sane. So that's exactly the mindset that I have, but we're meant to be connected uh, and we just need to be inclusive. And if you're a really inclusive, and I don't think you need to work on the gender equity. 
because it just comes naturally. And we have a lot of work to do as a humans. You know, it's not something that everybody's mindset is going to be changing with one presentation. But you are the future. I think if you can work on um, you know, developing that understanding that you all have a different purpose to impact the world, then you might be you might be just acting, you might be choosing your way of uh, life in a different way. So we're focusing on the future development, you know, without really looking at the present, you know, how much humanity is aware of their purpose to impact the world today. And this is where I bring my vision. And this is where the blink minds, because my vision is, and my purpose is to develop authentic blinking minds and inspire by the power of purpose. So I help people to fulfill their dreams and bring their uh, passion to life to workplaces and enjoy it and just really show them how they do it um, because your your well-being your leadership and your sustainability really really going to be affected um, and i can show you a lot of results that you know it's really the facts that it's just really even helping people to have to breathe right you know just be in the pro uh, present if any of you have taken any mindfulness classes or you're interested in yoga it really comes with your um, breathing system um, so that's why it really comes to blink minds, you know, how I really think that I can just have an impact to humanity and really work on the SDGs, you know, like with my purpose and with my organization. So if you see like any connection between these two images, like I was actually looking some images, you know, like uh, I'm a very visual learning, so everybody could be different. Um, but then I have this, you know, uh, visual from my other presentation. So when I look at it, see, you can't just work on the environment, right? You can't just say like, okay, I'm just going to change, you know, like, or fix the, you know, climate um, threat if you don't work economically and socially because sustainable is in the middle. So you have to have a different way of working um, as, as being a human. So when we think about this, this chart, so if you only work on to get money, right? Oh, I'm just going to go to work and just get money. Then you're missing all these things. So if you just say that, you know, I would just want to enjoy life because I want to just, you know, sit down and eat all day, then you are missing this part because the purpose is really, really in the middle. And if you really identify this, the all the other ones, it comes so naturally. And I strongly believe that the development of purpose is a central of well-being, leadership and sustainability because you're more aware, you're more mindful um, and you're just acting in a way that not being pushed here, right? Like if I come to you today and say, you know, please, as an individual, you know, don't throw your trash on the street. Well, you're going to do it anyway. Or if I tell you that, you know, you should be very inclusive. Well, if you don't know how, if you don't change your mind, you might not know how to really react on it. So it's very important to actually connect. And that's why, you know, it comes to teamwork, right? Um, and I worked in a very large organization where we talk about the SDGs for, for many, many years. And uh, we talk about the inclusiveness. But what I came today to understand and really encourage you and inspire you is that sustainability is today, is present. Uh, so it's really up to you how you make a connection with your purpose and how you want to be sustainable. Uh, even if you don't call it sustainability, you call it something else, but it connects with what you do every day. And, um, and sustainable cities and countries um, can be considered as a cities that have a social, you know, economical and environment performance. So if you have a very interest in sustainability, maybe you're just going to be moving countries, right? You're going to be going to a country that you can contribute more. So I think sky is the limit. I'm sure you heard about it, but it is true. So I just want to just ask you, uh, what is your ambition? So what means that, you know, it could be uh, science, technology, education, dancing, anything you can think of. Uh, if you just use your phone, maybe you you know, if you have been in my other presentation, if you can just use your phone and just the answer with one word, uh, and we're going to see the results because I just want to really understand what your ambition is. Um, and it will just take a minute so you can just, you know, come in and just, you know, like enter your words. Yeah, you can actually do it like in uh, Turkish, English, however you feel comfortable. Okay, so that's great. So I see finance, like leadership, right, management, 
Well, that's great. So engineering, I love it. Technology, uh, goals. So some people have a passion, make a difference. Okay, that's amazing. Science, power. Okay, so you're all going to be contributing all these ambitions into your life, right? And eventually your workplace. So this is this is this is great. See, use science for society. I love that technology. So the other one, like a leadership or power and design, design another one. So we're gonna talk a little bit, you know, how incredible, you know, like um uh, biological design that people are people are working on. Uh, a peaceful world. Yes, this is awesome. So, I mean, keep this, you know, like ambition in mind. Um, so, because I, I didn't want to just really ask, you know, about the SDGs because this is more personal. This is for you. Um, and people who have a meaning and purpose in their life, like that you are just writing right now, your purpose comes from all these, you know, like ambition. So it's not a, like a rocket science. Um, that they live their life much happier. I see someone just writing happy. Uh, feel more in control. So if you guys remember, you know, like my presentation, you know, being really mindful and understand where you're going and have a compass and um, and get more out of what they do. So basically you accomplish more. You are having an impact in the world right away. And they also experience less stress, anxiety and depression. So you have a very good magic formula there, which I'm going to talk to you a little bit. Um Okay, so let's talk about, you know, all your passion. So I just pick, you know, like a few here. So you can just have a passion about, you know, fashion. You can have a passion about education and being a teacher. But let's talk about, you know, technology, right? Um, sustainability, sustainability in technology will also be about how mostly, you know, lithium ions, batteries of the electrical cars and solar panel and will be disposed of you know companies are focusing um on recycling you know these batteries and building products on um, who's you know like who's you know like a core car products are going to be maintaining for and the new batteries you know will also be ones you know like it's going to be up, up front so if you work for a company that has this purpose uh or you know a purpose to actually just be using these to have an impact the world and maybe, you know, with your technology ambition, you can be a great fit for this workplaces. And, um, and the same thing for um, environment and education. So if you think about, um, you know, if you think about education, it really starts from, from uh, when, you were, when you were a kid. So like, for example, my son just, you know, grew up, uh, not grew up, uh, was born in Turkey, Istanbul. And then we moved here when he was four years old. Uh, the one thing that he actually recognized, and he was four years old, you know, within a month, and how the, the the weather and the environment is much cleaner than Istanbul or you know like Izmir. So the, the children just learned this, you know, like from their um, from their earlier education. So right now in the in the U.S., I mean, if I need to pick one, for example, for myself, and just because I love education, I love having an impact, educating people. Uh, I would love to, you know, like a pick on SDGs on the, you know, quality education, because there's a large gap between society's aspiration for a healthy and sustainable future with education and the knowledge and skills and attitudes that has been taught in, in schools and in society. So I would love to work on this. And if I'm in an organization with this purpose in mind, then I will be very happy. And, um, and we're going to talk about it. Um, and another one, engineering. Um, engineering is uh, biomimicry and ecological design. If you are interested in science, I would love you to guys then just go and look at it and how the other countries and uh, biologists and science they're designing. They're designing um, like a, um, I think it was the water um, resistance, you know, like a, some uh, like a design with the um, with the trees leaves. You know, when you look at the leaves uh, of the tree, 
you're going to see a lot of vine, right? The veins that, you know, like you have there, they're going to be, you know, like comparing and designing from there. So it's really just, you know, like using it through my other slides, root gener generation and humans are doing as nature. So it's a very, very um, interesting area with the ecological design. Um, I've seen one design from Canada, Vancouver. They're designing this, um, this bridge um you know with the natural you know um like a forest you know with all these you know like leaves that they the, the animals can leave while people are actually using the bridge and it's a very um uh, it's a very um mimic is a very small ecological design so if you're interested you know i find it very um fascinating so, but I want to just talk about, you know, go back to purpose. So your purpose is unique to you. So even if I talk to you about technology, you know, um, engineering and education and fashion, you know, like using resistance, you know, like materials, I really think that it's important for you to think about um, and understand the companies that you are going to be working at or the business that you want to just open up, right? You can just be opening your own business. You can say, I'm going to be opening... Um, yoga practice or coaching um, coaching consulting firm or um, technology firm, then you're going to be thinking about how your purpose is going to be impacting the world in a different way. But if you're working in an organization, so let's give an example. So um, when you search, you know, like internet, you know, um, some organization, they have a very strong purpose. Like, for example, one of them is Unilever. When I look at it, um, Unilever says that our purpose is to make sustainable living commonplace. So if you're going to be working at Unilever, if you're going to be applying for Unilever, you have to have a mindset of their um, competencies that is going to be matching with this purpose. You know, it doesn't have to be something that you do every day to be a sustainable world, but you have to have a very match, you know, like a purpose. So the same thing with, um, I really love this on Harley Davidson. You know, if you like, you know, like a motorcycle, um, what their purpose is, we fulfill dreams of personal freedom. So if you are just riding a motorcycle, it's different than riding a Harley Davidson. So you need to feel like a free, right? It's not just, you know, like you want to, you want to have money and you want to buy a Ferrari or you want to buy a very, you know, like expensive, you know, like motorcycle because you want to ride, uh, you want to ride it. This purpose of, you know, like working with them, it has to be aligned, you know, how you feel like when you are riding a motorcycle, which is Harley Davidson. So do you enjoy freedom? You know, how could you impact the world by connecting um, others, you know, while you do that? Um, so it's really identify the companies, you know, like Whole Foods, for example, is an, another one, it's a supermarket. Um, Whole Foods is actually, it's right now with Amazon online at they, um, they got Whole Foods. So like they say, our purpose is to nourish people and the planet. So basically their mindset, their purpose, it's very clear. There's some organization that they don't have a purpose. So if you just come into those organization and and just try to make a difference, you know, with, with your mindset, well, you can try it, but it's always, you know, like needs to be a very cohesive um, approach. So that's why I always tell, you know, like future generation, don't pick the company because you think it's, it's a good company in your mind. You should be the one that are choosing the company, not that they should be choosing you. Um, so it, it's important that you have this mindset to understand your purpose. If you don't have a purpose, and believe me, I've been there, you just look at it. I was like, oh, you know what? I got this offer, you know, like from this company. I need to go because that company is very good. But now, if you have a more um, purpose aligning with sustainability, just to live your life, you know, very happy, healthy life, you just need to look at those. I think... Um, that's that's what it just makes a big difference. And it goes to our um, last slide, pretty much the magic formula. So what I have been doing all my life that I missed this part for sure. So I just try to make it right to myself to work in a culture um, in without a purpose or even if they had a purpose, I didn't know. So if you are in an organization, again, their purpose 
could be very general, could be very universal. You're going to be really cascading that down to your role specifically, how your role plays an important part of um, that organization, which aligns with your purpose. So your purpose could be a freedom, right? If your purpose is freedom, one word. And most of the time, you know, when we think about the purpose, you know, people, they're coming and just writing a paragraphs, you know, like, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to achieve. This is the steps that I want to take. That's not, that's more like a mission and tactical way of, you know, like uh, companies are doing or the way that you maybe you can think of your goals and objectives. So purpose is really more generic. It's really just, you know, like identify who you are. The values, the bigger picture. If you have this magic formula, which is very, very simple as, well, it also complicated as life is, but also as simple as if we think about it, um, by understanding the needs of um, individuals, um, sense of belonging, like I feel belong, I feel belong and trusted in this organization. You're already um, naturally working on gender equity, right? You're psychologically safe to tell your opinion in an organization that you are working and your purpose is freedom. So it really works, right? Because you are really just, you know, free at work. You just get up. You feel like, you know, you're actually doing your own business and you love the environment and you have a sense of belonging. Um, as some of you remember, I always believe that we all need love, right? We all need to belong somewhere. That's why we feel like we are belonging to organization or we don't really engage in the organization. And that's what the question mark. And then you go back and you really understand who you are. And you create a more uh, fulfilling and purposeful experience. And for people where you are in the um, organization and environment, you know, um, and this is only just to create a very meaningful and healthy and happy life for, for employees, uh, for, for students at school, and, uh, and for, your, for your own life, you know, for your own social life. So I really think that... Um, your, your leadership purpose, you know, like I, I always see that the leadership just at the top and to go there, you need to start with the mind, being mindful and really understanding who you are. Um, but whatever you're an entrepreneur, if you're a CEO of a fortune, you know, like 500 company, your purpose is your brand, you know, like your name, your purpose is your brand um, and what you are driven to achieve this magic formula. What makes you think? You know, like it's it's not what you do, um, it's how you do your job and why. And if you get one um, perspective from me today, you know, with blink minds, you know, like that you all understand that it's really rethinking the sustainability with purpose. But I don't really believe in titles. So, and I've been in corporate world for many years, so it's very contradictory for me to say that. But it's not, it's not what your title is telling you. It's really like what you do and why you do it. And so if if I see people, you know, on LinkedIn and somewhere else or the job description, you know, like, okay, the director or VP or, you know, um, like a CEO, it just makes sense when you see them very engaged with their work, right? Um, which, this is with everything. Like when you cook, you know, when you teach, it doesn't have to be in the workplaces. So it really comes to, you know, like um, understanding the job description, let's say, not only what you can contribute, is it what you really you are meant to be, or if you, this is really something that you are um, you're in, enjoying, and what the company's purpose, um, and also you know like all these strengths and passion you bring to the table, no matter where you're seated. So this is where the blink minds, you know, with the learning camps that are going to be coming up, um, and uh, many others, you know, like uh, webinars that we are going to be having. We always focus on your strength. So we are getting, you know, like um, getting your core strength and make you understand that the purpose is so critical uh, for you to be happy. And I just want to say thank you. And um, is there any question? Do I still have time? I would love to um, get any questions. You can always reach out to me, um, nas at blinkminds.com, or you can just send me a message, you know, from Instagram. So is there any questions? And questions could be in, in, in Turkish um, 
or in English. Okay. So let me stop sharing. Okay. Oh, thank you all. So I'm trying to get the question. Oh. Okay, so. Yes, I see one is that Nazlan başta Türkçe konuşmuyor muydu? That's a great question. So I speak Turkish, but I really didn't. I haven't done any presentation in Turkish, so it would have been so boring for you all if I speak Turkish and explain that. But I, you can always reach out to me. I don't want you to think that I will speak English with you. Um, okay. Okay, as conscious and educated minds, what should be the action to raise awareness and make the global companies set action for sustainability? I think that comes from Elif, um, I saw one. Um, so so to, to answer that, well, you just need to look at the company as a whole, right? So um, I think the interview process will just really help you to first understand um, if, if the companies are taking action for sustainability. So, and based on your, your, your, your purpose and passion, it's something that is very, very important to you with what you do and what your ambition is. So you need, just need to understand first if they are really willing to do that. Because what I have done that I thought that I can just change the environment, right? I can be the change agent. So probably you heard about it, right? You heard, um, uh, I mean, since I've been in the corporate forum of many years, so I was like, okay, you need to be a change agent. You need to be a change agent. But you cannot really be a change agent if the leadership of that organization and the others, you know, like in your team have a different mindset. And, and that's the truth. So um, the action to raise an awareness, you can actually bring your purpose into organization. And if you believe in the organization, if they're willing to find uh, the organization cohesive purpose that will just engage everybody to raise an awareness, you can actually be the start person. You can actually go there and you can raise an awareness. You can actually do a lot of sessions. And that's exactly what I do with organization as well and organization that are interested in and really uh, raising that self-awareness. So if you are, if you can just, you know, like um, if you can just be yourself and raise that awareness um, to others and if they listen, if the environment is really um, gives you that freedom, then it's very easy. And that's why most of the people are not engaged, right? They are just, that's why, you know, it goes back to my point. It's like, oh, I want to just really work with this company, X company, because they are number one. Well, they're not number one for you. They might not be. So it's very important to raise an awareness for yourself and then go to organizations, see if they're adaptable. And you can, you can easily understand through the interview. Um, that's what I do interview coaching as well. You know, for you to just not be there as a person that they need to choose, you are going to be choosing the company that you want to work for. I hope that answered, but if you can always um, write back to me and we can talk about it. Mm. Uh, could you please talk about the internship offers your company has? So my company, uh, it started literally like six months ago. So um, if you are willing to contribute to Blink Minds and reach out to me, and we can always find a way to work together and you will learn from me, I will learn from you. And that has been my experience with, um, with everybody that I interacted uh, for the past six months. There hasn't been all leaders. There has been at I guess everybody, you know. Um, I even talk to people from Africa. If you follow, um, if you follow my Instagram, you will see that um, Eddie, for example, from Africa, you know, you should see his purpose. His purpose is to reach out as many children as he can and to educate them, um, and that's all he cares. So he's doing it by his own. So that's why purpose is unique to you. 
I don't want you to think that you're going to be able to go to an organization and raise a self-awareness because then you're going to be wasting time. You can actually work with them and understand the environment first. Um, do you have any suggestions for us about improved English for business life? Yes. And actually, um, I do have a um, suggestion, you know, for you guys to improve English for business life. You know, it's funny that when I actually um, lived in Turkey, uh, my first job was um, at um, CCI, which is, you know, Doğadan. You you heard their uh, probably presentation. So Coca-Cola bottling. And um, I had to practice my Turkish for business. Oh, my God. I failed so many times. And what I did is a trick that I talk to business a lot and I talk to people conversational. And one trick that I can tell you, if I learn one word in English or in the in the language that I want to practice, I use that word within the two hours. It doesn't matter if you record yourself or if you talk to someone that you're close to and use that word in a sentence that you hear it. Um, and it comes to conversational. Uh, but if you're interested in that, I also, you know, like can help you with the English, business English uh, for specifically. And for those of you, you know, who asked me, you know, like why I cannot do the presentation. And to be honest, I'm a very authentic person um, because I, I'm not really good at, you know, um, the business Turkish. Um, but when I talk to people, I definitely speak Turkish. So. Um... Can you please tell us some of the possible reasons why you are announcing that ST plans are failing? Well, you know, um, I, I think, I don't want to say failing. I think it's waking up, you know. Um, I think all these, um, you know, SDGs plans that, you know, we all talked about it, right? As I told you, um, I work in a very large organization that we talked about sustainability um, and, you know, probably, since I know myself, I always knew about, you know, like climate threat, right? Global warming and many other ones, you know, education, poverty. So I think right now it's not failing from my perspective is waking up. So right now uh, we're understanding that inclusiveness and also health, you know, people health and the planet health is very important. So this is what the COVID virus is showing us today. So it's not failing. I think is really just raising the self-awareness to, you know, um, to, I think Elif's question, you know, sometimes the, the nature just reacts to us, right? Just to organizations and the people and just to raise the self-awareness. And um, that's why the collective teamwork is so important. So if you're in a team, in an organization that you're all want to achieve something and you all have a different idea and character, you are way to go. Don't give up. So it's very important. Yes, yes, of course, we can talk about this in detail, LinkedIn uh, or Instagram, you can write it, uh, nas at linkminds.com. Mm. The nature and the resources are limited, so we are humans should come together and fight together. But when we do this as a society, then we have to get the understanding of um, strata and layers within the society yes that is important so for example uh, vancouver um, like in canada um, that ecosystem you know um, ecological design if you try to do that in istanbul and if you just have this you know like mines or in izmir or in in dubai you know in, in anywhere that you know like that the society is not um coming together with the same purpose you're going to have a challenge. But as I mentioned, you know, when you look at the awareness of 30, 37% with the control group, that's very low for uh, for awareness. You know, um, if, if I ask you the definition of sustainability, it's very important. But think it very simple. You know, I think when we think about those, you know, like all the goals for development, it will always feel like we're failing because we don't really simplify to ourselves, you know, just the drinking water. If you don't drink water, you're not going to be sustainable. You're not going to be living. So that's how it's simple to think about sustainability. So if you're drinking water to survive and eat food, and I think you should just really figure out why you are, what, what you meant to do in life and contribute that to the right organization. 
you remember my last slide, magic formula, that's exactly where it is. We tend to skip the first part because we don't really care who we are, you know, because we we tend to give more attention and, um, and precious feeling to the organization that we work for than ourselves. So today I'm telling you that rethinking sustainability and or ability to sustain is really just refining your purpose. Um, and okay yes yes ben teşekkür ediyorum yes we usually underestimate the first part yes we do um because you know um since i've been in hr for for many years and um, we all talk about this like elevator speech right elevator speech or it has to be 30 seconds oh my god that gave me like anxiety so many times like you're in the elevator like and then you are talking with the ceo or just you know like a vp or the top executive you have 30 seconds to tell you what you do oh my god you have a lot of things that you're thinking right or should i say my title or should i really say my name or if i say my title am i going to be underestimated because i'm only specialist you know if you look at my title but i can offer more so all these you know like a brain cells are just you know like connecting to each other and make you worry make you anxiety and you just feel so um you know demotivated after you get out of that elevator and you just say what did i just said now probably i'm not going to get a promotion but that person is just thinking that you know like i can't do anything so yes you are missing the first part because if you understand who you are you're going to be just saying like your purpose and not just only your purpose obviously like you're not going to say oh my purpose is freedom but you're going to be very easily identified that with the work you do then it's going to come naturally you know just like you drink your water it comes naturally you get thirsty you drink water or sometimes you don't get uh thirsty you drink water because people are telling you that it's really healthy to drink um eight glass of water right so really identifying the inner core um and i can tell you uh the people that i work with even myself so i don't say anything that i haven't experienced so i always go from my life journey and that's what it makes it you know like a blink minds is very unique than you know linkedin learning so i'm not going to be coming to you and just talking about um talking about, you know, like all the textbook, you know, because you're already in, you know, college, you graduated or you're going to graduate and you're going to be in a workplace. So um, I'm not really like a, that boring presentation person. So I really go with the life um, experience. So you're going to be very surprised how people are this finding purpose and passion is really helping people to understand um, uh, to live much uh, better. I even seen people breathing differently uh, and it's hard to believe. And I didn't believe it for many years. So I understand if you don't, but I recommend it for a future generation. If you want to just really express yourself and have an impact to the world, I don't want you to forget about all sustainable development goals. They're there, but they're also, you know, like inside of you and brain, you know? So it's very important. So one of the things that, you know, like Blink Minds is doing, because I really love education. So I really work with this person, Eddie from Africa, Uganda. You know, I would love to go there, but probably I won't be able to. But how can I just actually help and support the education of children? So that's exactly where I impact the world, you know, and it comes naturally. It comes, you know, like with the passion. And um, so we practice uh, this a lot, our student clubs, Young Entrepreneur Society, and this is what we actually need those days, elevator pitch, because unfortunately nobody have time to listen to your thoughts and opinions. Yes, however, so if you can, you can still have the elevator pitch. The reason I'm telling you that I don't want you to be, um, have an ex, mm, I don't want you to have anxiety about the elevator pitch. So you can actually simplify your elevator pitch if you know your purpose in a better way that makes sense because i see that including myself i used to just you know like look at the elevator pitch and try to memorize it if someone asked me i need to tell my name i need to tell which department i work you know what i do oh my god how am i gonna say this in a simple way but if you find you know like the way that you know like you want to impact the world with your work at the workplaces it's going to come naturally 
I think this is still, instead of saying elevator pitch, I really just, you know, like focusing on, you know, like sort of what you do is like who you are. And when you think about who you are, you're going to be easily thinking what you're doing. So I want you to just go back to the, at the beginning of the formula, you know? Um, and again, it's very important. You Companies are not choosing you. You're choosing the companies. And that's very important. Uh, what is Blink Mind's purpose? Yes, yeah, long versions. Yeah, you're right. Um, uh, Sena, I believe. Um, so, Yamur, uh, what is Blink Mind's purpose? So, Blink Mind's purpose, and, you know, like, which comes my purpose, my vision, is really developing authentic and blinking minds that is being powered by purpose. So really fulfilling, you know, people's dreams. So for example, um, when I work, how I apply to what I work. So when I work with someone that who actually works in psychology, I, or no, who studies psychology, but wants to work in HR. So I stop them. I say, let's, let's look at our compass. And let's see if we are going which way. Is it what is your work life? What is your life view? And then I just connect, you know, with the workshop and with the coaching that I do and really um, understanding their childhood, you know, like um, passions and experiences. Um, then I bring it to today, what, how they can apply. And from psychology to, you know, like HR can be so different and come out with the interior design. So they become to find out what their passion is and what their purpose is. And I apply this, you know, like a interior design to the profession that they wanna work or the job that they wanna apply. And does it fit? How can we fit? And how can we prepare, you know, for an interview? Um, how can we beat AI for interview, video interview? How can we control our emotions? And at the end of the day, you are, you're telling me what you like. And I want to give you with the example what my purpose is, then I really just reach my purpose with Blink Minds. Because if you look at one sentence, what purpose is for Blink Minds is really, you know, spreading the power of purpose and impact in people's life um, and for a greater humanity. But if I say this without an example, you might not understand as what I give an example of, you know, like real life stories, how from psychology to HR change it to interior design and that person specifically apply for a startup because that person could design, they can design programs, which kind of, you know, like brings their passion to life. So then I'm happy, you know, and I do this, you know, for, um, for my passion. So it really connects. I don't do this for money. I don't. Um, I don't do this just because I enjoy. I have all these, you know, like a circle together to to make um, my purpose. And that's why, you know, like if you just bring with that, you're just going to be very sustainable. Yes, I am really so uh, happy to meet with you. Elevator pitch is. My nightmare, Beza, please contact with me. Don't. I, I think elevator pitch is just, you know, like what um, uh, buzzword, you know, what buzzword is that, you know, what everybody talks about. Um, and just people get anxiety about elevator pitch. We will name it something different. And you're going to just really, really uh, be good at it, you know, um, because what we come with these um, taboos, you know, and labels, uh, and in some societies, even worse. But when we come, if we break those, you know, like labeling ourselves or just being in that taboo and saying that, oh my God, I need to do this elevator pitch because my school says so. I need to do this elevator pitch because that's the only way I can succeed in the organization. I say big no. So the, the thing that you're going to break through is who you are. It's going to bring you to those speeches. It's going to come very naturally. And you're going to be very surprised how, how much you can say in a simple way, but means a lot. So I think that's the whole thing that I learned in the U.S., you know. Um, and I can just, you know, like share with everything that I actually learn. And if you have a passion to to impact the world in the US, in UK, in different parts of the world. I work, you know, 
with all kinds of people around the world. So I'm I'm happy to just connect with you to to help you define your compass. The one thing I don't do is I don't tell you what you like, which makes sense, right? I can even tell what um what he likes to my my son, you know, who is seven years old. He makes his own decision. Um, if I missed any, because uh, I think it's well, eight thirty a.m. here, so I think it's um, three thirty in your time. Uh, I don't want to just get it um, gets your time out of your break. So if I didn't answer your question, please reach out to me. Um, okay, I'm gonna try to look at Jem Utku. Uh, Asian society have worked together to stand against today. We think that society is much more developed. Yes, so the first part is awesome, amazing awareness. I I admire that society is much more developed, right? If you look at it, uh, we have all the systems, even more than what we need, where we can now work, live, and think together. That comes with the belonging. That comes with, you know, like how, how safe you are uh, or how organization make you safe and inclusive. So to me, uh, bringing different ideas, different characters, and you know, like into my organization or into my workshop, that means creativity. So again, for this one, if you think like that, the organization that you work for, Jim, is very critical because you care about this. You want to work and live and think together. So the company that you are going to be working, well, they have to really um, be ready for you, right? They have to be ready for you because you're going to live, think, and work together, So, which is awesome. Um, what stable ambition of humanity do you think that has prevented us from being a society with? Yes. So, so, so I see some people are just, you know, like trying to find their ambition, right? They're trying to find their passion. And if they don't find it, they're so disappointed. And those are the ones that I think think that ambition or passion is unstable because they are killing themselves to find their, their passion. So with the work that I do is that it comes naturally, you know, what their passion is, you know, with the question that I ask, you know, with kind of, you know, self-awareness that I bring to, to that person, individual, just brings that ambition to be stable for the humanity work. You know, whatever they do, they can actually, um, they can do um, fishing, right? They can be a fisherman and, or they can be a DJ and they can be a teacher, but their ambition or what I would say their purpose, it's cannot be stable if they're not willing to find it. So, and, you know, because you said I had some of my attendees friends, you know, think that the ambition is something unstable something is unstable yes so it, it will be unstable because you're just killing yourself to find the right ambition for you right profession right um right passion so what i'm saying stop doing that let's for, let's start with who you are then what you found out it's going to be stable and when you find out stability with your ambition um and then you're going to have an impact to equity, welfare, awareness in the organization you do. So if so, that's why everything starts with us, you know, with the present moment. So if I just, you know, give a presentation that we need to do this and this and this, you know, for 2030, I don't I don't feel any um, reality on that. I don't feel any authenticity on that. But if I tell you today what you can do, that means more. Uh, more than anything else, that you can actually get up today and thinking about it. Even thinking about it for five minutes, it's better than nothing after this presentation. And that's a very big, um, uh, you know, happiness for me. So if you think about it, if you find your purpose, if you don't, you know, like you, you combine those with your uh, ambition and passion, you're going to be stable. You know, even if anybody can come to you, um, that they, they know you, you know, in a way, in a certain way for many years, then they come and they're like, oh my God, what are you doing? You're going to be like, you don't even have to explain. 
you know, and kill yourself with the elevator pitch or, you know, like in a long presentation, you're going to know what you're doing. So most of the, uh, most of us, the biggest, um, biggest, not a mistake, but biggest um, outlier, biggest um, obstacles that we do, we never know what we are doing. We're always being told what to do, right? By society, by teachers, you know, like by company leaders. But I want to just, you know, like know what you, what you want to do and who you are and tell those leaders what they need to change it. And that's why you're here. And you can only do that with the self-awareness. You can't just say, you know, I have an ambition today and it's going to change um, tomorrow, which is so normal. You know, your purpose could be changing, you know, like five years from now, but it's still going to be around, you know, who you are. It's not going to be just so, so different. It's going to adapt to itself, like how nature is. You know, COVID-19 virus is just showing us that we shouldn't really look at the 2030. We should look at today. Isn't that true? So I would have loved to meet with you guys in person. And hopefully, you know, um, I will at some point. Um, yeah. So thank you so much. Um, and how can I know myself to find my ambition and purpose? Yeah, just um, Barkun, Brock. I never know which one to say, uh, but Brock or Barkun. I'm going to say Brock. Uh, you can reach out to me. Um, and it's not that complicated. <laughs> um, spend time. Yes. Yes. So spend time what you really am. Yes, you, you really ambition is. Um, that's true. And the purpose comes naturally. But 90% of the people, the purpose sometimes doesn't come naturally and they just get disappointed. Like, for example, Oprah, um, Einstein, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates. Right. Uh, if I tell you don't go to college because Bill Gates didn't do it, that doesn't make sense. Right. So some some talents. And then, or you're a, you know, you play piano all your life and you're very good at it. Some skills and talent comes naturally, but if it doesn't, doesn't mean that you don't have an ambition, you don't have a purpose. And most of the people are like you, so you're not alone. So, um, and, and again, that's, this is what I do. This is exactly what I bring my passion. Um, and otherwise I wouldn't be able to talk um, and just say it very authentically because um, it's also, it's also part of my life. I think Tariq is right here right now. I think I'm I passed my my time. But thank you so much all for uh, for joining, and uh, I'm looking forward to connecting with you. Sevgili Nazlı çok teşekkür ederiz. Bence her zamanki gibi inanılmaz bir konuşmaydı. Yani eminim insanların da siz de bunu anlıyorsunuzdur. E, zamanda biraz artık problem yok, toplayabiliriz. E, ben hatta konuşurken bir yandan arkadaşlarımızın geçeceği diğer sunum linkini de chat'e bırakmış olayım. E, tekrar Isaac Türkiye'nin Instagram hesabından da şu an yeni partnerimiz Metro ile birlikte olacağız. O linke geçebilirsiniz arkadaşlar. Zaten e, birçoğunuzun bildiği gibi Nazlı Hanım'la bir süredir beraberiz, ortaklıklar kurduk. Bizlerle birlikte olmaya devam ediyor. Sağ olsun bizlere emek harcıyor. Ve en büyük vizyonlardan biri aslında Bilik Mayıs'tan aldığımız şeylerle hayatımızın her alanında kullanabileceğimiz şeyler öğreniyoruz. Ve bence bu çok değerli bir şey. İnsanlara bu serbestliği veren ve belki de öğrenmeyi öğreten bir yapısı, bir katkısı var Bilik Mayıs'ın ve kişisel olarak sizin. Ben çok teşekkür ediyorum. Ağzınıza sağlık. Saat farkından dolayı da biraz yorduysak lütfen kusura bakmayın. Yok yok çok çok memnun oldum. Ben çok çok heyecanla yapıyorum. O yüzden saatin bile farkında değilim açıkçası. <gülüyor> o yüzden çok teşekkür ediyorum. Özge hem sana hem Tarık sana hem de herkese hem katılımları için hem de yorumları için. Çok teşekkür ederiz. Görüşmek üzere. Hoşçakalın. Hoşçakalın. Hoşçakalın.